Hi, folks. Larry Wingett here. Let's talk for a few minutes. I'll wait for a bunch of you to show up. When you do show up, give me a little thumbs up. Let me know who you are and that you're here, and we will go from there. So if you need to get something to drink and grab a cup of coffee or whatever, maybe some of you are out to lunch right now. Still only uh, 10 till noon here in good old gorgeous Scottsdale, Arizona, where we're about to break a record. It's going to be 89 degrees, possibly 90 on Thanksgiving Day, which would set a record for ever since they've been keeping track of what the temperature is. So it's going to be a warm time at my house on uh, Thanksgiving. There we go. There's Brian. Uh, hey, Brian. He says, hey, Larry. Hey, Brian. Hi, Larry, says Jeff. There's Ronald. There's Eric. Good. We've got a crowd showing up. 30 or so of you here and growing fast. There's Randy and Jane. All right, folks, I've been traveling this week, and uh, it's good to be back for Thanksgiving, but I spent a week on the road. I was checking in at American Airlines. I uh, I get paid for airline abuse these days. I'd speak for free. i got to get paid a lot of money to do the airline abuse. I'm standing at American Airlines because I'm going on a one five-day thing. I'm not doing my normal carry-on. I actually have to check a bag, which I avoided all costs. Uh, but I had to check a bag. I am uh, lifetime platinum on ex on uh, American. I uh, have flown almost 4 million miles. They have always been the carrier that flew out of Oklahoma, and then when they merged with uh, uh, U.S. Air here, I was chairman level with them, and so that's the carrier. So I got a lot of miles. I get to check in priority and get all supposedly that preferential treatment and all that stuff. But here I am checking a bag. My bag comes in at 52 pounds. He said, your bag's overweight. You'll have to take something out. And I very nicely said, really, I need to take something out for two pounds? Come on. I, I'm three and a half almost, three seven to three hundred, uh, three uh, million seven hundred thousand miles, something like that, almost four million miles. I'm lifetime platinum, and that's your thank you to me? And he goes, hey, rules are rules. Take something out of the bag. That's just the way it is. I don't make the rules. I just kind of go by the rules. It doesn't take much to pull two pounds out of your bag. And if you don't, I'm going to charge you $100. $100? Okay. Um, so I reach in. And he said, just pull anything out. Well, there was a book inside, so I just pulled a book out. And I know a book weighs a pound. I ship a lot of books. I know that's how it comes out. So I reach in and he said, that's enough. That's enough. I zip it back up, set it up there. It's 51 pounds. And he said, well, that's close enough. I said, so rules aren't actually rules. The rule says 50 pounds, but 51 pounds is okay. It was the 52 pounds that made the rule be a rule. Because 51 pounds it must not be the rule. And the difference between 51 pounds and 52 pounds is really just an ounce. So I might have been an ounce over, so that one ounce made the difference in you treating me like the customer I believe I am, and you wanting to charge me $100. So it really wasn't a rule at all, was it? And he said, hey, that's the way it goes. Well, yeah, that's the way it goes. So now listen, folks, I'm not a person that believes you bend the rules. I'm not. I think that's what rules are for. I never approach anything from a sense of entitlement. However, I have earned as a customer, the right to expect a little something, just a little something, something. Maybe that little something, something was the difference in 51 pounds and 52 pounds, one ounce. Maybe it was the full pound. It doesn't matter. But as a guy who has shown the kind of dedication that I have, I've earned a little something. And it would have been okay if there would have been no exception if he had said, no, sorry, you need to take out another book to get it down to 50 pounds. That would have been okay. But don't tell me 50 is the rule and then let me slide with 51 because that's insulting to me. Are you insulting your customers because you're not treating them right? You're not giving them that benefit of the doubt that maybe your biggest and best customers have earned along the way. I believe that your biggest and best customers, the one that have paid you the most over a long period of years, have earned. They aren't entitled. They have earned a little something, something. Let's see what some of you have to say. Some of you give me that thumbs up there. Um, have a great day. I appreciate that, Max. Uh, Larry Wingate is demand. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Two words for success. Leonard says work and competence. 
Uh, okay, that's three with the word and. Those are not the, those aren't words, and I always talk about hard work and excellence, and uh, that's the way I approach this. I'm going to give you two more words, though, today. And the first one I just sort of covered, uh, gratefulness. Say thanks. It would be better for him to have said, you know, right, Sir, you're, no, sir, you're right. You know, you have flown with us for a long time. You really are a dedicated customer, and you've proven that in order to achieve the lifetime platinum status that you have. And I just want to take a moment to say, on behalf of all of American Airlines, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us. And, I'm sorry, sir, but you still got to get it down to 50 pounds. I'm good! That's all I'm looking for. Be thankful for the customers who have earned the right for a little something. And if you can't give them a the little something, still express your gratitude for that customer. Here's the next story. I'm leaving. Coming back. And uh, I'm at the airport, leaving Atlanta on the way back to Phoenix. I'm so glad to be getting out of town. I got about an hour and a half. I'm hungry. So I go into a place called Grindhouse Burgers. Grindhouse Burgers, they make gourmet burgers. It says it'll take just a little bit longer because we grind every hamburger by hand and we make every hamburger on the spot. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I got a little time, so it's fine. I place my order. I tell them what I want on it. Uh, I get my drink. I go sit down. And I wait. And I wait. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait. 25 minutes has gone long. That's long enough, folks. You can grind. I can damn near kill a cow, cut him up, and grind him in that length of time. I, I want my burger. It's been 25 minutes. I walk back up to the guy. Nobody in line, by the way. A lot of people have ordered. We're all sitting around. I walk back up to the guy and say, excuse me, where are we on that burger? Well, what'd you order? I said, well, you, you kind of ought to know that. And I run down. I said, here's my ticket. Right there. It says Larry at the top. Number 57 up here at the top. Here's everything that's on the list that was all supposed to be on that burger. So he turns around and says, where's that burger? And the guy says, listen, we're really behind back there. Okay. I said, how much longer is it going to be? He goes, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Well, that kind of bothered me a little bit. And he said, why don't you go sit down and calm down and we'll get it to you when we can. What? Go sit down and calm down. I'm a grown-ass man. Don't tell me what to do like that. Why not say, sir, I'm sorry. I, we... We've got something going wrong. We're backed up back there. Let me fill your drink up for you, and I'll make sure we get your hamburger out to you just as quick as we possibly can. That's a much better way to approach it. But instead, calm down, sit down. Doesn't sit well with this old man right here, I can tell you. A minute or so later, brings me my burger. Actually, I had to go up there, and he handed me my burger. I go back, all wrong, everything. The only thing that this burger had on it that was supposed to have on it was the burger. Nothing else was right. I walk back up. Takes me a minute to get their attention. Now, there's three other guys complaining about how long it's taken, and they're all there shouting and yelling. And I'm still pretty calm. I said, you know, the burger still doesn't have, it's not right. It doesn't have anything on it. Another guy walks up next to this guy and says, so what did it have on it? I go, listen, you guys are supposed to know that. Here's my ticket. So he takes my ticket, and he turns around and says, we'll make you a new burger. I said, would somebody, either one of you two, they're both right here in front of me, this far away from me. I said, would either one of you want to say I'm sorry to me as your customer? Because those two words have never been said here. I'm just looking for an I'm sorry. They ignore me. I said, really, I'm just looking for somebody here to say I'm sorry. And one of them turns around and says, why should I say I'm sorry? I didn't do it. Folks, that is the problem with people in business today. Why should I say I'm sorry I didn't do it? Why should I say thank you? Back to the first story. I'm not responsible for it. The two words I want to talk to you about today are thank you and I'm sorry. Common courtesies. That's what it comes down to, common courtesies. And you experience just what I've experienced all the time. I'm sorry says I didn't personally do it, but I want to speak on behalf of the company and just say, listen, we're messing up here. And we're going to make this right for you. Same thing with a thank you. Same thing with being a pound over. That's what customers are looking for. Somebody to appreciate them and to take responsibility when it doesn't go right. Lots of times it will not go right. I've done it in my business. Folks, I screw up all the time. In my business, I do. I've shipped the wrong stuff. I've, you know, I've just made mistakes. You've made mistakes. 
And I, what, here's what I've discovered after doing this for a lot of years and being in other businesses for a lot of years. Customers will forgive you for just about anything when you are genuinely sorry. You've taken responsibility and you've expressed regret and you've asked for their forgiveness and you fix it. People will forgive you for about anything. That, that goes for any relationship. And people love it when you say thank you for your business. And that's what it's going to take to turn your business around. Let's see. The lost art of customer services, Lloyd. Absolutely. Uh, George says, can't make this up. Yep, you can't make this stuff, as you said. Uh, easy, easy to succeed with great customer service. Uh, if you've got a great product and you've got great service around it, and the product and the service adds value to people's lives and businesses, you're absolutely right. Uh, a lot of thumbs up on this one. Come to the UK. We say sorry <laughs> for everything. Jeff, you're right. You and Canadians, everybody's sorry. So sorry. And uh, I love both countries, but you do you do say I'm sorry a lot. So there you go. Uh, yeah, and they want $15 an hour, Dave said. Yep, they do. That's a, Believe me, that's a different discussion. So this is a short message today. It's not going to go on very long. The point is that if you want to be successful in business, here's what it takes. It takes an attitude of being grateful, especially appropriate, and maybe the appropriate week for me to talk about this because it is Thanksgiving. Be grateful. Be thankful for the customers that you have. Remember that customers, <coughs> excuse me, who have been with you for a good long while have earned some slack. I never believe by the way, you cut people slack. I believe slack is earned. And a customer has been a loyal, dedicated customer and paid you a lot of money over a long period of time. They have earned some slack. The next lesson there is take responsibility and be sorry. It's really very simple to do. Let me see what you have to say. Lynn, had a guy on my grandson's preschool uh, parking lot slam his door into mine. I asked politely to pull his, pull his door away from my car wouldn't get damaged. He kept hitting my door and, and yelled at me in front of my grandsons. Yeah, people are incredibly rude. Uh, and Marilee, I can't read exactly because yours is coming up there. Let me see. Uh, kids working in the local malls make me never go to the mall. Yeah, and here's the deal. It's not employees who don't care. You're, you're blaming employees. And yeah, they have to take responsibility for their actions at some point. But that is an issue of the culture of the business. And those kids would care if they had an employer, a manager, who cared enough to train them and who rewarded good behavior and fired them for bad behavior. Consequences drive behavior. One consequence is a dedicated customer like me. Another consequence is a customer like me who will never do business with you and will go on here and talk about Grindhouse Burgers in the Atlanta airport in Terminal D at Gate 29 and do my best to help kill their business. Some of us are like that. Get, treat us bad and we'll tell a lot of folks. Treat us well, we'll tell a lot of folks. That's how it works. So, uh, if you make a mistake, own it, says Randy. Apologize for it. You know, admit it, fix it, and move on. It's the If you've read any of my stuff, you've heard that before. Admit it. Take responsibility. Fix it. That's what it comes down to. And then move past it by making it right with people. So, there you go. All right. That's what it is, folks. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. This year, we're sort of going off tradition here, just a bit at my house, having a turducken. I've done it before. My wife's not happy about it. But I am, because I love duck. And so we'll have a turducken this year. I'm smoking it on the big old smoker, having all the traditional sides. It's going to be a big time. Got all my family with me and all those grandkids. I'll post a picture. Thanks for uh, following me. If you guys uh, would like to hear this again, remember to find it on the Grow a Pair podcast on both SoundCloud and iTunes. And uh, thank you so much for turning in. I hope you have an amazing week. Thank you.